Shalom, shalom, greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are, what an opportunity, what an opportunity, you know, like I keep on saying it, every day is an opportunity, but that doesn't mean that everybody sees it that way, you can see it differently, and instead of seeing opportunities, you see um, trouble, and um, have you realized that many people are so blinded and they don't even know how to see? Even when there's something good that God is trying to show them, they don't see it. They see evil. Now, evil ceases to be what they see on the outside. They realize it's what is on the inside of them. But they don't realize that the issue is now what is inside them which is not helping them to see what is good out there. Every day is an opportunity, like I said, and uh, we have to learn to seize, to take advantage of that opportunity to grow in the knowledge of God, to grow in the wisdom of God, to discover our truth, identity, and so on and so forth. We have to see that. We have to realize that. We have to grow every day. Again, it's an opportunity, but do we see it that way or we see it differently? I pray that you will be able to see it. Even in what we call trouble, it's because of our perception and interpretation of the circumstances. In the life of Jesus Christ, who are we learn a lot of things that even when he had to face the winds in the sea, he did not consider those uh, winds in the sea as, as negative. He considered them as something that needed some help. And so they needed some peace. He saw the outcry. When they were raging, he did say, peace be still, and they received his peace and they were peaceful. It's only that we do think in a wrong way, that we perceive things differently. And uh, again, like I'm saying, then it's not a matter of what we are seeing necessarily out there. It's a matter of how we are shaped or the mindset we have, because we kind of see what we have inside us. Many people don't see what is there. They see what is in them. And what is in them becomes the reflection of how they see things, life, and so on and so forth. Many people are not aware of this. They are not aware of this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want to help you here and understand who you really are is the, the key on power of power. Remember, we're talking about power in first in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. It says he's the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying of radiance of the divine, and he's the perfect imprint and very of the imprint and very image of God's nature, right? That, that's what we see in Amplified Bible. I want to see the second, the the next part in that very verse. Let me let me read um, uh, King James Version. Who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by my, all things by the word of His power. Mm -hmm. He says. 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power upholding all things by the word of his power upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of of the majesty on high now before we come to that i want you to consider this this word in and upholding and upholding all things upholding you understand to hold okay upholding all things that means sustaining all things he's the one who is uplifting all things if we don't see the the world falling or the whatever everything is not moving from its own uh, uh orbit or in its own positioning in the atmosphere in the universe we we think they are just there but the writer says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power so there's been a word released to all these things and the reason why they are behaving is because of the word of his power that is upholding them <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you know that that the stars are upheld by the word of his power? Did you know that the sun is upheld by the power by the word of his power? Do you know that the um the moon and other planets they are actually upheld by the word of his power? Nature is upheld by the word of his power. Life is upheld by the word of his power. Creation is upheld by the word of his power. Human beings are upheld by the word of his power. Because he uses the word upholding all things. When you say all, you mean all without exception. Upholding all things by the word of his power. So we've got all things upheld. This is the secret. This is the mystery. So what the Amplified says? The Amplified says this it this way. upholding and maintaining right upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power mm-hmm. did you see that did you hear that I repeat again for you to catch the idea here he says upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power Are you talking about power in fact, there is no power beyond this power. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by His mighty word of power. So the whole universe is being held, upheld, maintained and guided, propelled by the mighty word of his power. The mighty word of power. The word of power holds all these things, maintains. The sun renews itself. Nature renews itself. Even when people don't care, they realize things are just the way they are. They think probably they are just 
it's happening by accident or it's happening by itself. No. There is a force and the power that is upholding all things, that is maintaining. You, are, you understand? Maintaining. You know, when you have an object, something, and it's been used for, it's been used, it needs to be maintained for it, for it to continue to function. So the whole universe is functioning because he upholds it and maintains it. The whole universe is upheld by him, including now all that you'll find in the universe. Because he's talking about the universe, and that means it's not the universe as the a substance in the air, but he's talking about even all that in, is in the universe. So nothing is out of the universe now. There are things which you can see and the things which you cannot see. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, it talks about the thrones, the invisible and the visible. So, but all that is held by him. The word of his power. In other words, he released one word of power to maintain, to uphold. He doesn't keep on speaking. You know, he's not speaking every day like I speak this, I speak this to be maintained. No, he spoke one word, right? <laughs> and that one word, upheld, is now maintaining, guiding, propelling the whole universe. It is under his mercy. We're talking about the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, now, you know, all this is meaningless if we are not appearing anywhere. Right? So why do we appear? We are his sons. We are the sons of God as well. And we are seeing what a son does. <laughs> but the word of his power, in other words, in the first place, that the words of sons is supposed to be power. The word of his power. Jesus Christ knew very well, it was so clear to him that his words were so powerful. Even the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the congregation, the people who listened to him, they would see that there was, there was a difference between his speech. And there's a certain place whereby we are told by the writer that these people said, but he, he preaches in a certain way that he's not like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. There's power in his word. There's something in his word. Yeah. But that word is what upholds, maintains, guides, and propels the whole universe. It says now, did you know that you carry the same power? Did you know that you carry the same ability? My goodness. A son of God. He talked about arranging all things, the air of all things. And he's talking about upholding all things. You know the only giant that is sleeping is called the Son of God. When we realize what that means, what that entails, and our responsibility that is connected to our rights and our abilities, then we'll see all this aeon come into an end. And the climax of this age that will lead to the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many do not believe how powerful we are. And we do not believe because we don't know. We don't know. And that's the importance of the gospel. To awaken us. To help us wake up. Because what we carry is too much to be ignored. You've got power. Child of God, you've got power. Shalom, shalom. Thank you.